Dumelang. Je vais vous dire que familière de la famille 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 de la the de la famille 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 de la it's because one time we were performing um, in Muff Town, and I had my shades on, and Jawa took off my shades while I was on stage, and I was so offended, you know? But he was my big brother, I really couldn't do anything, and he told me, You're very sabaton, we hit that idea, Mukasi. Mukasi, I want a superstar, Mukasi. You understand? And that moment lived with me, you know? And I always have to remind myself to keep humbling myself and keep on um, living by some of the things that I learned from Jabba. And now that my shades are off, because I'm like, Sabu ni shabu, eh, Jabba na hupu droa khut ma ni shabu. That's all. Because otherwise, Um, I speak on behalf of the kids, Bama Figing, Northwest, Botswana. <laughs> Jabba gave us a, a sense of pride, a sense of belonging through his music. Like Amu was saying, Joburg is very tough, and unfortunately, this is the place where we have to come as artists to come and pursue our dreams. And you get to a place where, you know, Omotswana, you're from a small town, nobody really respects you, nobody knows anything about where you're from. And the one thing we had was the 60s. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was your one reference. Have you been to the 60s? No. If you don't know where I'm from. Do you know WHP? Yes, that's where I'm from. That was, you know, what we got from Jabba. And I remember one time, the first time I saw him, I was sitting and he passed up. And I said to my mom, you know, this guy's a celebrity. My mom didn't know who he was. And I'm like, I, I want to be like him one day. My mom didn't understand. The second time I saw him, and Nigelala snook again, Tumbuga snook up blind. So I was there since the morning, and here comes this guy, Anna Solantis. And yeah. And he had a yellow jazz phone. I had never seen anybody's phone being so busy, you know? And that's when, like I said, okay, so celebrities get phone calls all the time. That was the second time I saw him. And then the first time I met him and spoke to him, Nelokoletla Moring. And Jabba had this thing of greeting you like he knew you, even when he doesn't. So the first time I met him, I think Ayanda is the one who introduced me to him, and said, yo, this is Casper, because Ayanda was working at something called Expression, so she was an MC there. So she said, yo, this is the Casper. This is Casper, anyway. So. And I felt like he knew me. But I later on realized after chilling with him that this guy greets everybody the same way. <laughs> it doesn't mean that he knows you. And then fast forward, working with Jabba for the first time, I was taken in by Tasman when I was 16 years old. I dropped out of school. And... I came to Johannesburg, I was doing this music thing. Everybody thought I was crazy. But anyway, I was working at, I was living at Tasso's house. And one time I, I woke up and I saw WHP's car outside, which meant he was in the studio. So I walked in the studio like I didn't know he was there, you know. So I just walked up, ah, show sure, Uhizu. And on the spot, he was playing Wam Tsibam too. He's like, yo, man, uh, I think you'd be perfect for this song. And Jabba would always put you on the spot. And he'd expect you to arise to the occasion. And that's how our relationship started. We made that song. 
Jeva started calling me at like 12 in the, in the evening or 2 a.m. and said, hey, that's how he shot the video. He didn't tell me anything. That's why I look so pop in the video. Because he just said, hey, I'm chapel around the house. And he was Josie. Six o'clock, got on a um, taxi, came, only to find out that we're shooting a video. Shot this video. Months later, I started traveling with Jabba. Jabba used to pay me for every show just to hype him up. That's how I started making, uh, I got a source of income then. Um, thank you. And my biggest dream at that time was to sign to Jabba, right? And as he would always put me on the spot, he told me that I'm not an artist that should be signed. I could be a businessman and should be as big as Lil Wayne, like Sabelo would say. He would always tell me that. And I'd be like, man, this guy's so crazy. I'm hungry. I'm just trying to release this album. But he would always tell me that, no, I can't, I can't sign you. I can't sign you. I can't. Eventually, you know, I ended up having to do my own thing. And he was right. I, I ended up blowing up in a way that I also couldn't understand, you know. I took, you know, my success was really, really crazy. And we drifted apart. I was very busy. He was very busy. There was a lot of assumptions. And long story short, um, me and, you know, Jeba had like a very big fallout. But I'm proud to say that I have never, not once in public, disrespected him. I have never, not once in public, shared how or, or responded to any of the stuff that um, I felt. And I'm so glad that I didn't because those are the videos that would be going up on the internet right now. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I met him and came up to me and said, yo, man, hey, you that And I'm like, no, man, I got a lot, huh? I send you a text. I showed him the text. There's actually a small video of me and him talking. And he looked me in the eyes like, hey, but your vest got a lot, Joe. And I told him I love him too. And we carried on speaking, but he carried on saying, hey, but got a lot, and looked me in the eyes, you know? And we took a picture. He, he, he forced me to pray with him. Unashamedly so. And that's one of the things that he taught me. We would speak for hours about God, you know. And that's, it was so weird because a lot of hip-hop or rappers don't really, you know, they're not really spiritual. But, you know, we also connected on a spiritual level as my brother. And... I feel like just as he always put me on the spot, he has put us on the spot again. I think this was unexpected, but for me, and I will remember him as one person who always taught. He had a lot of wisdom. Um, I felt like the years that I spent with Jabba taught me things that I could have learned within 20 years if I was alone. And he taught me in a short period of time. And he's put us on the spot to say that we need to love one another more. That was his biggest message, and we need to love God. And that would be my ending note. Kirba, family, Zambo, and the rest of the family, Khumotsekhang. And to the fans, let us celebrate him. And Mudimunkyo, thank you.